Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Vanessa Collette at the World Resource Investment Conference. Joining me today is Greg Johnson, President and CEO of Prophecy Platinum. Welcome, Greg. Great to have you here with us. Thanks. It's nice to be here today. Greg, some people might find this surprising, but according to a recent report, both Platinum and Palladium were in a deficit in 2012. How does that affect a company like Prophecy Platinum? It is a, it's a very interesting development. It's something that's been in the process of unfolding over the last several years. It started in 2004 for Palladium and 2006 for Platinum, when the mining production of those two metals peaked, and they've been falling ever since at about 2 to 3% a year. That's quite unusual compared to most metals where we see you know, continually rising supply with continued rising populations, the normal type of situation. So with rising demand and falling supply the last six or seven years, particularly out of South Africa and Russia, it's a very interesting time to be looking at the platinum and palladium market. So there's been global supply disruptions and a lot of problems in South Africa. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The, the issues in South Africa, you know, this is one of the world's largest producing regions. Uh, these are deep underground mines. They're relatively narrow horizons uh, that are high cost to mine and take a lot of people underground. Uh, and so those, those issues of their cost structure in South Africa are structural. They have to do with the, the geometry of the ore bodies, the cost to extract the, the ores, rising labor costs, rising energy costs, and, and really uh, current market conditions, the current price of platinum, 70% uh, of those mines are not economic today when you look at their all-in production costs. Between the supply disruptions in the sector and the strikes, how are Platinum's fundamentals looking to you? I think this is one of the most bullish uh, fundamentals in the precious metal space. It reminds me a lot of the silver price at $5 an ounce when no one liked the sector, the producers were all struggling to make money. Uh, I think we've got a chance here that if the prices stay at the current level, we're going to see further mine closures, and we've seen many announced over the last uh, several months of this year uh, in South Africa in particular. And if the metal prices rise, we could see the market hungry for new exciting stories in platinum and plating. So it sounds like you think platinum is going to be moving upward. We're very bullish. Uh, we see this falling mine supply uh, was more than 10% for each of the uh, platinum and palladium respectively last year uh, with a rising demand, which is largely being driven by catalytic converters. So this is green technology, makes the environment cleaner. There's no substitution for these two metals. So we think that really paints a very bullish picture. Is that the primary driver for platinum, the catalytic converters? That is the largest market for both platinum and palladium. Uh, there are other industrial uses. In contrast with gold or silver, uh, more similar to silver, I would say, uh, the majority of the use for platinum and palladium is industrial with a much smaller investment or jewelry demand. So these are being driven by uh, particularly the developing world and their interest in automobiles and their increasing environmental standards on those automobiles, which mean they'll have to use more platinum and palladium to achieve the environmental standards they're seeking. Greg, you started your career about 25 years ago with Placer Dome, which is now Barrick. Can you tell us what that was like? Well, it's been an interesting develop personal, uh, personal development for me to start out my career as an exploration geologist, uh, working for those big mining companies. Uh, it's a great opportunity. You get to travel the world, looking at deposits for them, understanding what those big companies look for. Uh, it then led to the opportunity to start my own company with uh, some partners. I was one of the co-founders at Nova Gold. Uh, we had an exciting story at the bottom of the gold market where we built a company that put together one of the largest gold reserves in the world and built that over about 12 years that I was there, um, taking the value of the company from about $25 million to ultimately more than $2 billion. Uh, I had an opportunity then to go on to my second company in South America where we had a huge technical success. We grew a silver deposit from about 100 million ounces of silver to 400 million ounces but we ran into challenges uh, with political uh, risk in South America. And so I'm very pleased to be back in the Yukon Territory in Canada, working on a project with excellent infrastructure in a safe political jurisdiction, and in a metal, platinum and palladium, that I think has so much promise. So what is it about Prophecy Platinum in particular that caught your interest? There are a number, number of factors that myself and the team, we have a whole new team as of uh, six months ago, uh, joined the size of the resource, both in terms of the in-the-ground metal, but also its production potential. Uh, currently, we've got in excess of 7 million ounces of platinum, palladium, and gold in resource in an open pitable configuration. And our first engineering study that was completed last year would indicate this could be one of the largest North American producers, similar in size to Stillwater Mining, who is the, the biggest single producer in, in the United States. So this is an exciting opportunity. 
to take a, a project that's beyond the discovery phase, that's at that development phase, but early, and to take it and advance it, building the team, de-risking it, and hopefully seeing increased shareholder value along the way. When we've uh, talked before, you mentioned that the technical team that you see at Prophecy Platinum that you've put together is comparable to the one that you had at Nova Gold. You know, in our business, teams and success of teams is really the key. Uh, and I'm pleased to say this is one of the most exciting teams I've worked with. The depth of experience in terms of engineering, exploration, and finance. I think we've really put together a team who both has deep experience in the PGMs. Our chief operating officer spent 20 years of his career working in the Sudbury District, which is our largest single region for Extrata and Valet. He also helped build the capstone mine in, in the Yukon, the Minto mine. So he has both experience in PGMs at an operation level as well as in the Yukon. Plus our chief financial officer came over from the very successful Hunter Dickinson group. So he uh, rounds out the team in terms of financial engineering and exploration uh, expertise. And so I'm, I'm excited. You're gonna see us continue to build the team on the ground. And uh, we're quite excited about the developments that are gonna come out of this year's exploration program that we're just kicking off uh, this month. So what are some of the plans that you have in the next 12 months? Well, we spent the last six months uh, really digging into the data. We've compiled now, uh, Well Green is a project that was discovered back in the 1950s. It's had a number of companies that have taken a look at it. The big breakthrough on this project was, was when a few years ago, one of our predecessor companies drilled a deep hole underneath the historic high-grade underground workings and realized it was bulk mineable potential, that it was hundreds of meters of mineralization disseminated platinum and palladium starting right at surface. And that's really how we came to the scene. We consolidated the project, built this into a single unified uh, program and, and land package that could be developed. This year we're going to be looking at uh, trying to focus in on the higher uh, platinum containing sections of the resource, drilling some exciting holes we think coming out of the modeling work we've done over the last six months, and coming out with an updated engineering assessment and resource early next year. Great. When do you hope to be in production at Walgreen? Well, we're looking at a number of production scenarios from the very large, which would be a, a company making resource, something a Rio Tinto or a Barrick scale company would look at. But we're also looking at a smaller, higher grade operation. There's a lot of variation in the grade uh, from the average of the deposit to much higher zones. And so we're looking at the opportunity perhaps to do something that's right sized, modest in capital, high rates of return that could really get this going on the fast track. Potentially, that could have us completing the feasibility in the next two years and starting construction in 2016, just three years away. So uh, we think this is a project that has the ability to move quickly. And oftentimes in the mining space, because of the permitting environments, the engineering studies, it can take years and years and years to advance a project. So this is exciting to have something that looks like it could move rapidly. Moving on to valuation, can you tell us a little bit about the discounts that are applied to companies that are in development um, as opposed to producers? Yeah, historically, whether we're looking at gold, silver, or platinum, uh, the producing companies trade at a premium relative to those at development stage, and that reflects the risk. You still have to finance these projects, you have to permit them, you have to construct them. And the earlier the stage you go, the more that, that risk is reflected. So today in the marketplace, if we take the two first world jurisdiction companies, Stillwater and North American Platinum, they traded about $125 an ounce in the ground. That's enterprise value of the company divided by their resource base. The average at the feasibility stage, so these are companies that are just about to go into construction, they're working on their permitting and things, is around $30, $35 an ounce in the ground. So you can see that big drop in value that reflects that permitting risk and construction risk. And then if you go to the first development stage, the early development stage where we are, the average drops all the way to $3 an ounce. So there's a huge amount of potential value increase just to go from early development stage to feasibility, and then another big jump as you get into to feasibility. So our business plan, in essence, is to build the team with the experience to advance the project from the first engineering stage where we are today into feasibility, get it permitted, partnered as we need to, to be able to advance this into a production value. And I might point out that at the stage we're at, this early development stage is often the time when you see the most explosive resource growth. So we think this project is ripe for new discovery. We think there's a lot of potential. It's open at depth and laterally. Uh, and we think that we've got a lot to deliver to the market and it could be a very exciting year ahead for us. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Greg. I appreciate it. And we look forward to having you back again soon. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.